This is She Creates Business, a podcast for wedding pros. Your host, Kinsey Roberts, interviews incredible women in the wedding industry who are making their mark and creating success on their terms. Join the conversation. Well, hey there, and happy Thursday. Welcome to episode 10 of She Creates Business, a podcast for wedding pros. I am so happy that you're here. It's truly an honor to have you listening. Thank you so much for all of your support over these last 10 episodes. I just, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I started this podcast after thinking of starting a podcast for two years, and I'm sorry, that was my phone, and then I finally got the guts to do it because I was just a little scaredy cat, and so here we are. We're at episode 10 with many more to come, so thank you. Thank you so much. It's because of you that I'm doing this. Today, I have Christine Darden. Uh, She is from Celebrations of Love in Kansas City. Uh, I met Christine at the Creative at Heart Conference in July, and she is a rock star. She's a wonderful planner. She's been doing this for, I believe, just over five years, and she has so much to teach us. Christine actually created her own It's basic, she's going to go into more, but it's basically a membership site for the vendors that she works with. It's like a membership site on the back end so that all of the vendors that she works with with, uh, in all of the weddings can communicate with her and with other vendors. It is seriously brilliant and she created it. And this has made her like the go-to planner in Kansas City. People want to work with her because she's so organized, she's so professional, and they feel great about the whole project. You know what I mean? They don't have that kind of like, oh, the planner's not communicating with me, the florist isn't communicating, it's all right there. So stay tuned for that. It's a great tool. Christine, if you're listening, thank you so much for being on She Creates Business. I had a great time talking to you and learning from you, and I just really appreciate your wisdom. Today, guys, our sponsor is Ginny Krause and the Heart of Your Brand Strategy Session. Super excited to have her on this month. She has been an amazing supporter of me and of the She Creates Business podcast, and it really just has been an amazing it's been amazing to get to know Ginny. She is just a powerhouse brand strategist for wedding entrepreneurs. She's offering us a heart of your brand strategy session for just $150, or excuse me, $149. And that's $150 off of her normal rate. It's a 60 minute session with an actionable workbook followed by a 30 minute follow-up call to keep you accountable with what you say you're going to do. If you're listening to this on Thursday, October 13th, I actually just had my strategy session this morning. So I'm going to do a podcast episode about it and report back to you and tell you what I came up with. Because for me personally, I told you that I sat on a podcast idea maybe for two years, like a little Frady cat. So I didn't really dig into my brand at all before I started it because I knew if I waited around that I wouldn't start it. So I just dove in head first. So now that we're here, we're in episode 10, I'm ready to kind of take a little bit of a step back and get the more a better overarching view of what I really want this podcast to be and what it really means to me and what it means to you. So thanks again, guys, for all of your support. I really appreciate it. Please head to JinnyKraus.com forward slash heart so that you can claim your 60 minute strategy session with Ginny. I don't know why I have an issue saying session. Claim your 60 minute strategy session with Ginny Kraus. She is phenomenal. I know you won't regret it. Even if you've been in business for a while, it never hurts to take a step back, have an outside view and just say, hey, are you still in line with your mission? Are you still in line with the heart of your brand? That's what she can help you do. Let's go to the show with Christine Darden. Hey guys, welcome to She Creates Business, a podcast for wedding pros. This is your host, Kinsey Roberts, and today I feel so lucky to have with me Christine Darden from Celebrations of Love in Kansas City. Uh, Christine and I met again at the Creative at Heart Conference, and I knew I wanted to have her on the podcast. I know that at the top of the podcast, I gave you kind of her professional bio, but uh, Christine, welcome. Hi, how are you guys? I'm so happy to be here. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for being here. I know you are busy and you're in the thick of moving and wedding season, so I know that we're going to get a lot out of this interview, and I just really appreciate your time. Oh, of course. No, I love this. This makes me, this this actually feeds my heart, so I love this. Oh, good. Well, let's jump right in, Christine. As I mentioned, I told everyone kind of your professional bio at the beginning here, but would you just tell us who you are, where you're from, and how you got started in the wedding industry? 
Yes, of course. So I got started actually in St. Louis when I was going to school at St. Louis University. Mm -hmm. Um, And it was kind of like a gradual start. I was a bartender and server at a local venue throughout my college years. And it kind of developed from there. I mean, I'll go into a little bit further in in the conversation, but um, that's where the, the, the seeds were planted. Um, and then I am originally from Kansas City, um, born and raised. And then, as I mentioned, I went out to St. Louis University for four years and then came back to Kansas City um, after I graduated. So, um, and that was in 2010. And so you had the, you were a bartender and a server in, in St. Louis. So when you moved back to Kansas City in 2010, is that when you started Celebrations of Love? Yeah. Um, so when Celebrations of Love was born on April 7th, 2010, and what happened was um, over my, between my junior and senior year, so summer of 2009, I actually went ahead and was an intern at one of the premier venues in Kansas City. Um, oh, awesome. It is the Brass on Baltimore now. Um, it was previously the clubhouse on Baltimore. So I was their intern and I did everything from setup to teardown to uh, selling the venue. I really got a really great um, background on the venue portion. Mm-hmm. And that kind of um, that's kind of where the interest really stemmed. And then I also got a great, um, the community. So the wedding community was coming into the venue every single weekend, Friday, Saturday. And I was seeing all these great faces and all these wonderful people, um, that were pouring their hearts and soul into the wedding industry. And what happened was I was getting requested to actually help brides outside of the venue. So say their date was booked at the venue that I was at, or if they, you know, had, um, had you know, just fell in love with the different venue, then they were like, Hey, come with us to this one. So then I was gaining clients along the, along 2009 to 2010. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Oh my goodness, I need a, I need a company. I need a name for this. Um, and so my mom over spring break with me, my senior year, um, as I'm kind of upset because I was missing out on a spring break trip. Um, I went home and said, I need to start a company. I don't have a job for after graduation. And so my mom and I came up with celebrations of love and it was, um, LLC date is, uh, the April 7th. Oh my gosh. I love that. And I also love that, you know, your exact business birthday. (laughs) <laughs> you have you have to celebrate each year. I mean, you do publicly. <laughs> you do, girl. You're over six years. I love it. Let me ask mm. you. Okay, so while you were at uh, the, I believe you said the brass in Baltimore, our brass on Baltimore, mm-hmm. right? Okay, so you said you mm-hmm. kind of started mm-hmm. gaining clients outside of your internship. How did they know? Oh. Like, how did they know you were available and also awesome at this? You know what I'm saying? Oh my goodness. You know what? I really think they just took a leap of faith on me because it was just, I mean, I think they saw how organized I was in their um, initial meetings. Mm -hmm. So I had like packets of information together and I walked them through the space and I really gave them like the details of what they could you know, the potential of the building, um, because it is an old, um, it's actually an old gentleman's club, an old Kansas city club. And so it, had some hard areas to do decor and do, you know, work through, make the flow of your event very, very cohesive. So I, um, they, they just really just took the leap of faith of thinking, you know, this girl's got something special about her and I want to I want to see what it, you know, see if she can help us. So that's really honestly. And then my boss who was at the brass on Baltimore, she was like, do it. Why not go? And so she kind of was that little like push of, you know, the little jumping um, point where I was like, okay, I can do this. This is great. I can do this. So yeah, my 21 year old self was, was planning weddings. <laughs> which is great. I love that it. is wonderful. Okay. That's a great boss right there who sees your potential and tells right? you to get after she, it. She is so I I'm still friends with her to this day. So it's I can great. see why. Okay. Well then let's start. So from April 7th, 2010, you actually like you get legit, you have an LLC, you're now celebrations mm-hmm. of love. So take us kind of on that journey. How did you, um, you know, what were your first weddings like as your own personal, as you, as yourself, you know, this is now your business. You are kind of like 
chief cook and bottle washer. Take us on the journey of like yeah. what those first weddings oh were goodness. like. Yeah. So the first weddings, I spent so much time. I spent so much time. And it really, I mean, as a new wedding planner, um, you know, and I give advice to a lot of new wedding planners, anyone that contacts me, I, I definitely sit down and have like coffee with them or whatever they would, they want. Um, and the kind of thing is, is that you actually have to work on processes and, you know, how it best works for you and how it best works for, you know, your clients that you're serving. So, um, the way that I did it was I actually set up and I only did day of planning at the beginning. And so what that was, was, and I was typically booking about three to four months away from their wedding date. And I was having a monthly meeting with each of them. Of course, it's different than my structure now, but, um, it was the way it was working at the time for me. So that's kind of how, and I was monthly, monthly meetings with them. And then it'd be their wedding day. Um, I was so nervous, um, the first couple of weddings I had, but it really, the, the confidence that, um, kind of grew from, you know, out of the first one and then the second one, and I kept going, I had been an event lead on many weddings at the venue. So I had this, you know, little nugget of confidence from being able to successfully execute those at the venue. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, you know, I can do this. This is, you know, talking to the um, venues that, you know, and being super prepared for those wedding days really made those wedding days go very cohesively. So over the years, um, it has changed. It's really, I mean, um, it's evolved from, being day of and doing, you know, the three to four months out. Um, and so in 2011, um, was really kind of the turning point for celebrations of love. And I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. I want clients that are going to want someone that's more than a day of planner. I was still doing day of until, um, 2014, Mm -hmm. but I was, um, expanding upon that package. And also with that package, I was moving up in the price point as well. So over the years, um, as of 2014, I only do partial and full planning. And, um, the decision on that is that I want to make sure that I am setting them up for success at the beginning of their planning process with, um, giving them the, the tools that they need so that they can really make the wedding that they're wanting and that they're desiring without having to, um, you know, redo any contracts when it comes down to those last three months. Um, and really working with them on the contracts to make sure that the expectations that they are looking for in the people that they're hiring are meeting what they're actually getting. So, um, so in that partial planning and, and the, you know, both of the package, I'm really there throughout the entire process. Mm-hmm. And that's what, um, it, those are my clients now. Those are my ideal clients. My ideal client is really going to be that person that's, um, you know, between 25 and 35 that is looking to pour their heart and soul and their love, um, and their details of, of them as a couple into their wedding day. So that's really how celebrations of love has evolved, I guess a little bit too. So sorry, I think we jumped ahead. (laughs) Nope. That's totally fine. I did want to ask you what was the when you decided in the beginning to only be a day of coordinator, what made you decide that? You know, why did you start your business that way instead of just starting with full or partial planning? Um, I felt like day of, I was, um, I was kind of the, and, and this sounds really silly, but I was kind of like the last minute band aid, like making sure that I was tying everything up properly. And I thought that's what I wanted to do. I okay. thought that's really what I wanted to do at the beginning. I wanted to be that, oh my goodness, you have all these, you know, loose ends. I'm going to tie it up and make it a beautiful package. Mm. And, and then I learned that that was not necessarily where I, I actually was more successful in, in helping them throughout the process. So Mm -hmm. that's kind of where that came from. That's really smart. And I think that's a great testament to the fact that you can start a business one way and it can evolve to Mm -hmm. be something, you know, kind of, uh, even a little different or a lot different, and you can still see success in both ways. So it's okay that you don't know everything right at the beginning. (laughs) Oh, amen to that because yes, yes, (laughs) yes. We're both like, yes, girl. (laughs) 
Yeah. Oh my goodness. Right. Well, you know, switching gears a little bit then how, um, and this is kind of a question for when you first got started and then how has it evolved to now you are, as we mentioned before, based in Kansas city. So how do you use local marketing, um, in your planning business? Um, I use, okay, so there's Thursday therapy, Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of a networking group. Um, that's all over the United States, but there is a chapter in Kansas City. And networking, I have found, is going to be, is my biggest referral market. Like, I get um, photographers that have worked with me and that have met me and have heard about how I work the company and how what my processes are, and they want to be a part of a wedding with me. Um, you know, photographers, DJs, florists, you know, every, every type of vendor. Um, so that's, that's actually really how I, I use the local marketing. Also, we have some great, um, magazines in Kansas city. So we have EA bride magazine, and then we also have Casey weddings. Um, and they'll actually, um, I've talked to, I've worked with photographers after the wedding and I'm like, let's get featured in them because that's what I feel like most clients are, are looking most of my my market of clients are looking at when they get engaged, they're looking at those real weddings. They're not necessarily looking at the ads. They're wanting those real weddings. So, um, so yeah, I try to get at least one or two published a season. Um, and so that my, um, celebrations love is in those, in those magazines, I'm sorry, in those magazines constantly. So, and how did you, okay. So those are two local magazines. Those Mm -hmm. are specific. Mm -hmm. Okay. so, So, I'm just writing that down. That's really interesting. Did you know about those prior to being a planner or is that something that, you know, you, you said, Hey, how can we, how can we, how can I, you know, get involved in the local scene? And you found those from your research. Um, those were actually just magazines. So right when I started, I was before, this was before Pinterest. Oh my gosh, this is so old, but yes, before Pinterest, I was actually the one that was cutting out pictures of magazines and putting them into their individual binders and, all that jazz. And so I actually, um, found those right when we were, when I started as a planner, um, I subscribed to every magazine so that I was constantly getting refreshed with new information and new techniques and all that kind of stuff. Oh, wow. That's a great tip. Those are some excellent local tips. Um, I, I think uh, planners now and also people who want to be planners are going to really enjoy those tips. Well, kind of switching the tables then, uh, how do you use your website and social media to market Celebrations of Love? Um, one of the main, one of the biggest things on my website is my um, reviews. So it's actually linked in, um, on, on one of my pages on my, um, on my website. It's actually linked back to all the reviews. So people can really get that firsthand comment and there are reviews that are actually through a website so that it's not just me taking random stuff out of emails and all that kind of stuff they're um real people real clients that i've worked with real moms real dads real everyone um and so that people that are thinking about using me can look out on the website and say okay that is the type of person i want to work with or you know i don't know you know that's that she uses, uh, you know, paper timelines still, you know, she actually prints that out. Um, I don't know if that's the best fit for me. So like they can actually see, you know, on those, on their views, how it, how I do it. And, um, so that's how I use my website, um, to go ahead and, and market the business. And then on social media, something that I've kind of come up with in the last couple of months is actually kind of, um, really defining my Instagram to be, um, celebrations, excuse me, celebrations love details. So there's a hashtag C O L details. And what, um, that goes back to is all the details from my clients weddings that, um, they, they really wanted to highlight about their day. Um, and as I mentioned, my ideal client is that, um, client that's going to want to bring like, Oh, grandma's apple pie recipe into her day. Or, you know, the groom that's like, Oh, I have wanted a throne. I've wanted to sit on a throne forever. And, you know, on my wedding day, I'm going to sit on a throne, you know, just details about their life that they're going to pour in there. So, um, so yeah, no, those, so COL details is right, right now the hashtag for my Instagram. I try to really give the details of the wedding day on that. 
on the Instagram. That is so okay. smart, Christine. Thank you for sharing that. What a great idea. Oh, you're, so, you're so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, you know, I, I think it's, I mean, I, you know that we are, we are very new to the industry um, and our venue. And I, I think that's one thing I don't think I know that is something that I've struggled with already. It's kind of just saying, what am I, what am I going to use Instagram for? Not that I don't, obviously mm-hmm. I know why I should, but you know what I mean? Really, oh, no, really yeah. pinning it down like you, like COL details and really highlighting those client wedding details because it feeds right into your ideal client because you want them mm-hmm. to have grandma's apple pie recipe. You know, you want them exactly. to be, ugh, it's so smart. I just, it's so brilliant. Um, what, so what are two, uh, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm going <laughs> to tell my husband you said that. Um, oh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. What are two resources that you would point wedding planners to who are either, you know, maybe in their first year or their first two years in business that you think could really help them? Um, One huge resource when I started, I actually went through the Weddings Beautiful certification course. And there are two certifications that you can get and they're at different price points, but that was actually the first thing that I did in the industry. Um, When I, it was right, it was right as I was, you know, incorporating. Um, and I wanted to be able to have like, you know, I'm a certified wedding planner or a, you know, certified wedding specialist. I wanted to have something behind my name that I could back myself up with. So weddings beautiful has those two different courses. And I really, really would highly suggest taking that, um, wedding specialist, um, course. And it also, okay. So this sounds crazy, but a lot of people reach out to me and they're like, I want to be a wedding planner. I love it, love it, love it, love it. I don't know how to get started. I don't know what to do. And I know it's really hard. And so I'm like, this will give you a good test to see if this is right for you because it is a challenging, you know, like it's challenging through the different lessons. But if you go ahead and get through that, I feel like that's a good accomplishment. And it's also a good indication if you do get through it, that there is something behind that. I really want to be a wedding planner. Um, so that's one of the things. And then I would also highly suggest going to some kind of like, um, planner in the market that you're wanting to go ahead and be in. And you might have to go to like two or three planners to get to the person, but talk to them, take them to coffee, or even just say, Hey, are you, do you have a meeting this week at, you know, uh, a Panera or do you have a meeting this week someplace? Can I just come and pop in for 30 minutes prior to your meeting or 30 minutes after your meeting and really talk to them and list out questions that you are really burning in your head and then, um, sit down and talk to them and offer to them buy, buy them coffee. Cause I mean, it, it is their time and, and you are, um, you know, you are, you are getting um, something out of it too. And so just say, Hey, let me buy you coffee and talk to you for a little bit. And honestly, they're going to love you. They're going to love you. They're going to want to talk to you. So I have done that so many times to planners in Kansas city that, um, you know, have, have asked me out to coffee and I'm just like, Hey, I'm at, I'm at Starbucks on, you know, 39th and Main, and come on by at four o'clock and they're there and they ask me a bunch of questions and I, I just start my meeting right afterwards. So that's kind of a good little, those are two tips, I would say. Those are great. I like the suggestion that you, you personally, as the person who is being kind of the mentor in that situation, you build it into something that you're already doing. So not only are you kind of giving back to the, you know, the wedding community, but you're also, but you're not doing it in a way that also hinders you from still doing your job. Mm-hmm. You know, well, and that was getting... It was, yeah. And it was getting a little bit difficult because like, Mm -hmm. I love, I love helping and I love being able to meet with everyone, but I just, I was feeling like, you know, we needed to like piggyback it off of something and, and driving, you know, to two different places and that kind of stuff. So, um, that's a suggestion that, um, you know, it would be helpful. And it's also very, it's then the planners are going to be like, Oh my gosh, she's so thoughtful. Like how sweet is she? Like, to think about that. And so hopefully that'll help other planners, other, you know, planners to be, um, you know, 
impress them too. So absolutely. Yeah, good call. Uh, I have a question. You well, you know, kind of speaking of getting face to face with people, um, as I mentioned earlier, you and I met at Creative at Heart, which is a conference that happens a couple times a year throughout the country. Mm -hmm. And we happened to meet at the one that happened in Denver, Colorado. And I was wondering, how did you how did you find that conference? And why do you think it's important to attend conferences like that, that um, not they're not necessarily wedding specific, but um, you know, we were we got face to face with a lot of creative business owners. Um, so the first half, so I, I found that conference actually through Kat, who um she, so she is the owner and creator of um, Creative at Hearts, and um, she started her company and she started with these dinner dates and so a local planner and I were like oh who's this girl she's started this you know dinner date idea this sounds great so we actually um the local planner and I we sat down and chatted with um Kat and then right after that was when Kat launched Creative at Heart so I went to the very first Creative at Heart out in um Washington like the Virginia area. Mm -hmm. Um, I flew into Washington DC. So I was like, but it was in the Virginia area. And, um, the importance that I felt at that point, it, I had, um, just gone full time. It was 2014 end of 2014. I had just gone full time with my company and I really wanted that like kickstart to be able to be, you know, around other people that have the same, passion and the same drive in the creative industry, not necessarily as planners. Like I wanted to just be around a lot of different creative spirits. Um, and so that it could force me to really push myself in, in creating even more driven processes and more driven, um, you know, ideas on how do I want to define celebration love from the other competitors in Kansas City. And something that's important in um, going to these um, going to these conferences, not only, um, in like the Midwest, but in other areas is to gain perspective from the East and West coast. Um, because mm. the Midwest love it, love it so much, but, um, East and West coast have it going on because the wedding industry is a little bit behind in the Midwest, which I found because I've done some, um, weddings out in different areas. Um, but yeah, no, I, I loved it. And I also coming back to the Midwest and sharing the experiences I have with other planners and other vendors, friends, they're like, Oh my goodness, that's so cutting edge. And, you know, just little things like that. So, sure. Yeah. Mm, you know, that's a great point. The East and West coast, I'm, I'm also kind of in the Midwest. So the East and West coast, they do, they're, <laughs> they're a lot. Um, I think their markets are just, I think they have like a higher spending cost like per wedding as I well than we do um well and, that is true that, that and is true. well yeah. and i don't know i mean not that that's necessarily why but i think that they you know they get creative with a lot of things and so mm -hmm. they really are on the cutting edge so that's actually a good point i didn't even think of that but you're right um it's fun it's it fun is. to see those pictures too to come out like and then you follow other people from those you know east and west coast and and you see what they're doing and see how they're you know you know, what did they incorporate in the wedding? Um, so yeah, it's great. It's really helpful. Agreed. What do you do? You know, what do you, well, let me ask you, what do you think? I know we kind of covered like local networking and you said something that I kind of wanted to circle back around to because I thought it was really, uh, really important. You said that you local networking has been a really big part of gaining clients because of referrals and also that vendors want to work with you because they have heard, you know, your processes and, and how much uh, you put into a wedding. And so they're like, we want to work with this planner. Can you kind of tell mm -hmm. us about some of those processes that you think are, you know, really help you just execute a wedding that even vendors are saying we want to work with Christine? Um, yeah, no. So I do, um, something that's actually, um, uh, it's called a vendor team corner. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's specifically for celebrations of love. Um, and when you have a contract with one of my clients, or if I hire a client that has a contract with you, um, you are invited to this vendor team corner. I built it myself, um, off of the, um, celebrations of love website and it has, um, it, 
has a lot of information on it, but it's pretty much like a web page for each individual one of my one of my clients. So, for example, um, on on any given page, you'll have a paragraph about the client. You'll have the ceremony venue, the reception venue, and you'll have a ability to click on it. Um, and so it'll pull up a map and any special instructions on, you know, for example, there's a couple of churches in Kansas City that have specific parking regulations and that kind of stuff. And so it'll have parking information right below it. And then um, I also will write, this is, this has gotten very popular, but I also will write the hashtag of the clients so that also vendors can hashtag the clients, clients little, which is my clients are obsessed with it, which is great. They like to see that behind the scenes stuff. And so I often will remind the vendors to give those behind the scene things to my clients. So, um, and then below that, it also just reiterates who all is on the team. Um, so every single person that has been touching the wedding from, um, wedding dress all the way down to, um, you know, an ice sculpture, whatever it is, um, they are listed there and it also helps the photographers out. So at the end of the wedding, they don't have to go and search around for everyone that they have been working with. Um, and for, and this is for like, um, submitting purposes to different magazines and publications. Um, and then below that, you'll have um, the actual timeline. And the timeline is, um, it's like s- stamped with the revision date. Mm-hmm. So you'll know this is the timeline that I am working off of and that I am going off of and my team is going off of. So if you have any, if anything is different on there, then we need to change it and we need to get it adjusted. Um, and then it has every floor plan. So if it's a ceremony floor plan, a reception floor plan, um, any, any floor plans that we have, they go on there as additional buttons so that they can click out and it can be pulled out to another window. I also love my assistant, love her so much. She let me know that you can download this, uh, this um, vendor team corner as an app and everything can pull out as apps onto your phone. So you can have, for example, Kayla and Phillips um, timeline as a button on your phone. And then you can also do their, t- their floor plans as a button on your phone. So it's like, I had no idea, but I love her for showing me this. So I'm like, I gave them a little tutorial on like how to do that too. So if they want to do that. Um, and then there's also like a forum that they can just click right back to me. If they don't want to go back to their email, they can just write an email from that page and they can say, Hey, we need to chat. We need to have a conversation about X, Y, Z, or, Hey, I didn't realize that they're having an outdoor ceremony I'm actually going to need a tent you know what do we need to do about that um for like you know a DJ or something or a quartet whatnot so that's one of the main things that my um all the vendors in Kansas City really really love about working with celebrations of love so um that's wow keep coming back (laughs) I feel like we could do a whole podcast just on the vendor team corner <laughs> uh, uh, and how well, you created and just, it. And I, <laughs> you're so sweet. Yeah. It's just, it's been huge. It's, it's really changed um, the way that my vendors relate with me too. So it's been, it's been really helpful. They know that if something's on the, that vendor team corner, I will just email them back and say, Hey, did you check it out? You know, have you, have you checked it out before you email this question? <laughs> so well, it's no, good. It's really good. Wow. That's a great, that's another great, I mean, not only is it a great, good relationships and communication, but that's really smart because it really streamlines for you and for all the other vendors too. So you're mm-hmm. not constantly um, having a back and forth. Wow. Mm-hmm. That is really yeah, interesting. No, it's that was my husband. Um, he was like, you're emailing all these vendors all the time. Like, can you put it in one spot? And like, we were sitting at breakfast. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I need to go to my office. Leave me alone for a while. <laughs> so that's I need where to go I'm create. Out. Oh my gosh. Yep, I need so, to go create. Yeah, yeah. So brilliant. Well, besides a vendor team corner, what are some tools they can be tech or otherwise that you use to manage your business and projects? Um, well, the, the corner, of course. Mm-hmm. And then I absolutely love um, Aaron Condren, uh, Life Planner. Mm-hmm. I am obsessed. I am obsessed with her new Life Planner. Um, 
I have the horizontal t- style. Um, and I just love it because my weekends, um, on almost every single planner I was looking at, and it's a paper planner. Sorry, guys, paper planner. Um, and I um, love that it has Saturday and Sunday full days. So I, I have most of my stuff on Saturday and Fridays. And so they have their own separate lines and they're big and they have lots of space to write. So that's one of the things that I absolutely am loving right now. Um, and I mean, it just kind of helps out with um, all the, the flow of, of what I have my to-do list on one side and then I have my activities on the other side. So it's kind of helpful. I check off the activities as I do them and then, um, and then I also check off my to-dos as I do them as well. So. Mm, love that. You don't ever have to apologize to me for having a paper planner because I feel you, girl. Oh, good. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just like to, like, touch it and feel it. And they're like, what if you lose it? I'm like, I take a picture of it every week. Like, every, you know, whatever. So it, it stays with me all the time. Mm, yeah. <laughs> how do you uh, quickly, and then we'll wrap up here. We are running out of time a little bit. But how do you manage your clients? Like, do you, do you have like an invoicing software or a CRM system? Um, so I actually use, um, flow charts and it's really, I mean, I, as I tell my clients in consultations, I am a paper person. Okay. Um, and I really still do flow charts and they're in Excel and they sit on my desk. That's actually sitting right next to me right now. Um, and it says all of their meetings when they have to meet with me, I will touch base with them at the beginning of each month. And then, um, it also has like the payments when they when their payments are due. Um, and literally I just, every week it's, it's sitting there and goes past my desk and I just do all those to do's every, um, every week. I haven't ventured into the aisle planner or any of those kind of applications. Um, just from my background, I, I used to work in a, as an, in an IT um, office and I just, it honestly um, scares me that um, for the applications, it just scares me still. So, I mean, it's a little fear, but um, I like the paper. I like to be able to see it and, and actually have it go through my desk and be like, okay, I checked off all of these details. I have reached out to everyone about their meetings and now I am going to start my week. So that's Tuesday that I do that. <laughs> Oh, that's great. And you have a specific date. No, I say, you know, uh, I think there there's a place for everyone's different. So there's a place for the applications and there's a place for paper and whatever works mm-hmm. for you. If it's not broke, don't fix it. That, I keep saying that I keep I'm like, oh, you know, I should really try this. And I'm like, it works. And all my clients know how it goes. That's so right. I guess it's just and I like it. And I really, really enjoy it. So it makes it easy, easy in my mind, my mind and my brain. So that's how it does. Mm, I like it. Yeah. Well, as we wrap up here, Christine, can you, what's on the horizon for you in celebrations of love? Do you have any uh, projects or offerings that you're really excited about in the upcoming year? Um, I am working on the, um, assistance that I'm bringing in. Um, I'm really trying to, um, incorporate them into the business and really grooming them to be able to be successful. Um, in either in if whatever they whatever they're looking for um so i have two right now um and one of them just wants to be an assistant to a main planner so um she she wants to help out at weddings she wants to be that person that's setting up and tearing down and those kind of things and so i'm really i'm making those um you know, those assistantships, the way that they, they're looking for what they're, they're wanting. And then my other one that's been with me for a while, she's wonderful. She's fabulous. And I actually think that she's going to end up being kind of a main planner and then I will be her assistant. And so it's going to be kind of reverse roles. And I, we're actually doing one of our, um, I, I've kind of been giving her weddings as she, as they, as they've been coming in with inquiries. So I'm really excited to see where that all goes and how that all comes about. But yeah, we've been working together for the past year and her assistantship is going very, very well. She's been doing great. So um, I'm excited for those two things. And then we have um, a couple other um, destination weddings, I would say, um, coming up on the horizon and offerings for that. So those are those are things that I, I'm very excited about. So we will keep everyone posted. That sounds <laughs> wonderful. I always love a destination wedding. And what I, I just wanted to kind of shine a light on what you said. That's so that's so smart to 
I feel like you would, you get better assistants or employees or interns when you help them. Um, what am I trying to say? When you like help them in the way that they're going to be the most rewarded, basically. Like, I, it, you know what been, I'm saying? It's been really, yeah, no, I totally agree with it. Um, so because I have learned, I was like, because I thought, you know, everyone just wanted to be an owner of a company. Like I thought, you know, any wedding planner wanted to be an owner of a company. And I have found, well, I did several interviews. I did, I mean, not several, lots of interviews over, <laughs> I would say over 20 interviews with girls. Mm. And, um, it's very, it's one of those things that you need to find that specific person that understands you before you even have to talk. Mm -hmm. And that is something that I have found with, um, my one assistant that's been with me for a while. I don't have to say much and she understands where I'm coming from and how uh, it's pretty much how Christine would do it. Like that's, that's kind of, um, you know, the celebration is a love way. So she's, she always, she has that in the back of her mind. So it's good. It's really good. And she doesn't, she doesn't want to be an owner of a company. She's told me that many, many times she sits in my office and she's like, giggle, what? When I like do something and I'm like, <laughs> Oh, you know, like, yeah, you just do this and that and you pay insurance and then, and she's like, no, 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 no. I'm going to leave. <laughs> so it's just funny. So I mm. love it. Love it, love it, love it. Well, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us today, Christine. It was so informative, and I really appreciate you being here. Oh, you're so welcome. Well, I I hope I wish all the best to you in Colorado. Thank you. Thanks for coming on again. All right, right, bye bye. You're welcome. Bye bye. Wasn't that a great episode? Christine is so knowledgeable and she's so well-spoken. I learned a lot from her today. I always love having wedding planners on the podcast. I love all of my guests and I learn so much from everyone. These women are just, it is just crazy how talented and brilliant and amazing they are. But I love to have wedding planners on because they really get, they're the, they're, they're the vendor who touches all vendors. You know what I mean? They have involvement with every aspect of a wedding. And so I gain so much insight as a venue owner from the planners because they can share their insight from every aspect of a wedding, from communicating with florists to photographers to caterers to, you know, DJs, bands, etc. So he- hearing from wedding planners and just hearing their overarching uh, picture of an entire wedding has been really fascinating as a venue owner and as a vendor myself. Uh, Christine, thanks again for being on the show. I really appreciate you. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. As we are up, excuse me, as we wrap up here, guys, I just want to thank Ginny Krause again for supporting us and supporting She Creates Business uh, with her her 60-minute strategy session, Discovering the Heart of Your Brand. Head to GinnyKrause.com forward slash heart or just tap your podcast player and click the link that I've included in the show notes. uh, Head on over there, grab your 60-minute strategy session with Ginny and stay tuned next week when I share with you how my Heart of Your Brand strategy session went for me and for She Creates Business. We can kind of talk about it together. That is $149. It's a special rate. It's over $150 or it's $150 off for normal rate. And I just feel like we can all benefit, especially in this fourth quarter, um, you know, capping off 2016, heading into 2017 with a fresh perspective on our brands. Thanks again for listening and we will see you next Tuesday. Thank you so much for listening to She Creates Business. Please take a minute and head to iTunes to leave an honest review so we can help more wedding pros find the show.